on verse 48 and verse 50 that says this. And he said unto her, Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith has made thee whole. Go in peace. And this is the word that he gave to the man to go tell the, for the daughter. But when Jesus heard it, he answered, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. Father, we do thank you for the reading of your word, God. We thank you, God, that you give us understanding. And God, give the in-depth, oh God, that is necessary, Lord God, to be able to preach your word in Jesus' name. We pray for the Holy Spirit to move according to his own will, Lord God, that he will increase, that I may decrease in the name of the Lord. We bless you right now, God, and we salute you in Jesus' name. And we declare your will to be done and your word be manifested in the earth. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 The topic will not change, but the message will. Even in the midst of the press, you still have to honor the call of God on your life. We talk about transformation. We hear the word transformation all the time, and we say that we're no longer conformed to this world, but we have been transformed by the renewing of our mind that we'll be able to prove that good, acceptable, perfect will of God. Needless to say that transformation means to change something without actually changing the value of what it really is. Now, we have already been purchased. God valued us enough that he purchased us through his son Jesus with the blood of Jesus. So we have already been purchased. So God knows what we are really worth. Now, our worth is not up for negotiation. In other words, the devil cannot come and negotiate with you or on your behalf and say that you're not worth this, that you're not worth that. I'm just not up for negotiation. Because I now know how much I'm really worth. A lot of times we always say this and we need to 
us process and he gives us the manifestation. Uh -huh. And one thing about God is this. God would delay the manifestation of the promise in order that you may learn from the process. And she said in her prayer, because a lot of times we would try to skip over the process to get the manifestation and then we don't learn nothing and we don't even know how to handle the manifestation of the promise that God gave us. Because we don't want to go through nothing. So when we look at the delay of the, of the manifestation and how now we all of a sudden we want to walk in the promises of God. And, and we know that his promises are yeah and amen, but we have not really learned nothing from the promise to the manifestation because we skipped over the middle part. And she sung the song about being in the middle of it. We got to get to a point in life that we want to be in the middle of it. Because we always want to be in the beginning and turn and be the last and want to be the last and turn to be the beginning. But what happens in the middle of it? I believe Jesus stood in the middle of the two things. Jesus was always in the middle of something. Now, we're looking at this woman with this issue of blood. Mm -hmm. And the Bible says that she had this sickness, this disease for many years. Mm -hmm. And so I'm quite sure that for 12 years for her to be an adult, that means that she didn't have this issue all of her life. Mm -hmm. And so she probably thought that she was somebody. You know how we are. We think we somebody when we get an education. We think we somebody when we get a new husband. We think we somebody when we get a new wife. No, God be it, we get a new job paying a lot of money. We really think we somebody then. But what happens when God stripped you of everything that you thought you were? What happened when God stripped you of your identity because your identity means to be the same way all the time? And then 2000 and 12 and 2013, we're, we're so busy about, I, I'm trying to find my identity. I, I want to know who I really am. I know I'm a child of God, but I need to know, have I been called a preacher? Have, no, have I been called a teacher? Am I a prophet? Am I an evangelist? What is my identity? Well, what happens when God says, I'm snatching everything that you thought you were? Huh? You thought you were born that way? I'm snatching that too. You think you were successful in life? I'm snatching that too. You think because you got married? I'm snatching that too. You think you can depend on your husband and your children? I'm snatching that too. You think you can depend on the love that you used to have? I'm snatching that too. What happens when God takes your identity? Huh? Yeah, I've always been Pastor Brenda, Elder Stover. When God snatches it, then what? Calling you your neck before the Lord when he snatches your identity. So what happened, he snatches this woman's identity. And now all of a sudden, she's just a woman with an issue. Jesus. Baby, what she went. Look at the woman with the issue. Look at the woman with the problem. Look at the woman with the situation. Look at the woman with the circumstance. Look at the woman with the drunk husband. Look at the woman with the bad children. She was just a woman with the issue. Yes, yes, yes. She was in a place of isolation. Not the type of isolation that we look for to say, oh, well, I'm going to get a word from the Lord. I need to be isolated so I can hear God. I need to be isolated because I'm the anointed one. And, and just certain things I can't be around, certain things I can't touch. So I just have to be isolated. Not that type of isolation. But the type of isolation where you can't get no opinion from nobody. You can't get no prayer from nobody. You can't get no help from nobody. That type of isolation God put her in. And when she was in isolation, they said that she was rejected of all. In other words, and so we don't understand that rejection brings direction. And not only was she in a place of rejection, but she was in a place of loneliness because the Bible talks about in the Old Testament because of the blood issue that she had, that she could not be around anybody because she would be contaminated. So all of a sudden now when she's declared legally unclean. Ah, legally. Oh, legally. Yes, Lord. Now the whole time we thought we were clean. We thought we was it. And now we're declared legally unclean by the world. Now the world don't want to touch you. Now the church don't want nothing to do with you. You already, you trying to figure out why this thing is going on. Because you don't understand that you're in the midst of a process. So when loneliness comes, it come, becomes confidence. You have confidence now because you ain't got nobody else to lean on. So now you begin to find your confidence in God because you don't have confidence in nobody else. And not only was she rejected, 
not only was she lonely, but she became unpopular. Her name didn't mean nothing no more because she didn't have one all of a sudden. She just had an issue. Her family members didn't mean nothing no more because she was by herself. Nothing meant anything anymore in her life because she was alone and she was unpopular. But when you become unpopular, it takes you to a place of humility. So 